Good evening everybody. You're very welcome to this Make and Decorate Your Own Christmas Cake. This is the final um, part of the three-part series of making your own Christmas cake at home. So I'm dying to see how you're all getting on and you're all very welcome. I see we have some people starting to come in. Hi guys. I hope that you're all nice and toasty wherever you are. Um, if you could do the usual, if you could give me a little wave or a little nod or a little something just to let me know that you can hear me okay um, and we will get started. Uh, we have a few people joining in. Good evening everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as I was just saying there, this is the third and final series in, um, thank you Jenny, um, to make uh, and decorate your own Christmas cake with myself and uh, Jem. Do you know what's so funny? I'm going to apologise in advance. My lights have been acting up I don't know whether it's the weather or what it is, but it just flickered there. So I'm really open that we're not going to be decorating our Christmas cake by candlelight. Um, but um, hey, Emma, how are you? I have the phone close enough to me here, so I don't have to be squinting too hard to read all of your comments. Um, but yeah, if you do see a little flicker of the light, <laughs> I will be lighting candles all around me here. But um, yes, you're all very welcome. As I said, this is the third and final part of the uh, baking gem Christmas cake series. So in the very first episode, and just again, if anyone is asking or wondering, um, all of the, the other two previous uh, lives that we've done are saved on the gem page. So you can go back and watch them anytime you want. Um, probably cutting it a bit close to the wire if you still have to bake your own Christmas cake at the moment. But listen, never say never. Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, the first series we made our decorations. And um, so that was the, the little edible, holly leaves and berries and our beautiful little uh, homemade fondant ribbon. So they're all here beside me in one piece still, I can't believe it. Um, and then also um, on that one, we soaked our fruit, got it prepared. So we used the um, Christmas cake mix, the gem Christmas cake mix, so it all comes in the one bag. So it's just super easy. Add it into the bowl with your wet ingredients and um, let it soak. And on the second live, which I believe was probably over four weeks ago at this point, three, four weeks ago, um, we baked the cake. So we prepared the tin and um, we finished, um, I suppose, making the cake and getting that into the oven. And we put up a little video afterwards as well of what the cake looked like uh, when it came out. And this is said cake. So this cake now has been made for, uh, made a few weeks ago. Um, hey guys, um, we have, this cake was made, yeah, about two weeks ago. So I have been soaking this cake. I've soaked it twice since uh, the last live. Again, you can soak it more than that. Um, it's completely and utterly up to yourself. This, as I said, weighs a ton at the moment. So a good solid Christmas cake here. So what we're going to be doing today, very, very simply, all of the hard work. If you are baking along with me um, or you have baked um, the cake and you're going to watch this back and decorate it. So if you are decorating it, this is, as I said, this is the very easy part. We're literally just going to be rolling some marzipan, putting that over it, and then finishing it off with some fondant. And then we're just simply placing all of our lovely decorations that we've made in the very first uh, series. And we're just gonna pop that on top of the cake. So as I said, it is very, very simple at this point. If you've got up to this part um, where your cake is baked and soaked and all that jazz, then you can take a deep breath. This is the easy part at this point. So without further ado, I'm just going to uh, get ready here. I have all my ingredients. Um, well, I say ingredients, I don't have that much, to be honest. I have the lovely um, golden marzipan here, the lights on that. And um, this is the gem golden marzipan. I have my fondant icing that I'm gonna be rolling out today. I have my cake and I have my decorations to one side here. So as I said, it, it is a very, very simple uh, step to do this. So I'm now just going to take off the paper here from the cake. And again, guys, any questions whatsoever, uh, please do fire them in. I will keep an eye on the comment section. Um, as I said, if you see me squinting, you know that I am uh, reading your messages coming in. So uh, yeah, please do fire in any messages that you have. So I'm just taking the paper um, off my cake here. Look how beautiful that is. That gorgeous, rich smell. The smells, it's just literally is the ultimate Christmas smell. Um, so again, just taking off that layer of parchment on the bottom. It's got that lovely golden brown base. And again, that lovely, uh, uh, gorgeous color. So you can do two things at this point. You can put it onto a cake stand or you can put it onto a cake board. So just for this one here, I'm gonna put it onto a cake board 
and we will display it on our stand later. So I'm just going to clear away all of this here, uh, my mess that I just made, and I'm going to um, prepare the cake now for putting on marzipan. In my opinion, the best part of the cake. I could eat and have done marzipan out of the packet. I think it is a love-hate relationship with some people. So if you're not a marzipan fan, you can skip this step and just put on your fondant icing. Um, and again, if you're like me and you like marzipan, put on extra if you want. The ratio of marzipan to icing has to be equal in my opinion. But again, that is a personal preference. And um, cake, as I said, has been made now two weeks um, and it has been soaked as well. So I've just been ladling on a little bit of whiskey on this as well, just to soak it up and give obviously that lovely flavor, but it also I suppose helps with the texture and also preserving of the cake as well. So that's ready to go. I am just going to open up my um, marzipan here. As I said, I am using the delicious golden marzipan. This is the uh, the gem golden marzipan. So again, so, so tasty. Oh my gosh, all day long. Um, so I'm just gonna pop this behind me here. And because I am an absolute madman for the marzipan, um, I'm going to um, put in a little bit extra. So again, one block should be loads, but I'm just gonna put in a little bit because we will be having this cake over the Christmas. Um, so I just want to have an extra little bit there for myself, okay? Um, so our marzipan, very simply, we're just going to be kneading this on the table, getting it nice and pliable. This golden marzipan from Jen is quite pliable. It's not a hard um, marzipan, so it's very easy to work with. Um, so that will literally take a couple of seconds. So just with regards to the cake, so obviously we're going to be adding on marzipan here, which is going to be adding flavor. It's adding a protective layer here. So when we put on our icing that you get a nice smooth finish. Um, but we also need to stick this down to the cake. So um, I always use, and again, you can use what you want here. I always use a little bit of marmalade. Um, you have apricot jam, marmalade jam, um, and I just heat that up slightly. So I have just heated that up on my little cooker behind me here. So I just have a tiny bit of marmalade and I added some water in there as well, just to kind of break it down a little bit. And um, this will add a nice little bit of flavor too, but it is also really great um, for helping your marzipan and your icing just adhere to the cake um, and it does help. But again, as I said, you can use um, an apricot jam, marmalade, um, I, I absolutely love as well. So I think that just works really beautifully. And um, again, just gonna set that to one side and we use a little bit more of that once we have our cake completely covered then with marzipan. Again, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, please do fire them at me. Um, if you are um, catching up, this is the uh, third part um, in the Make Your Own Christmas Cake with Gem with myself, Shane Smith, and um, I am just going to be decorating the cake today. So um, again, it's just, it's such a lovely, it's a lovely thing to do. And I know people always say, God, it takes a good bit of time to make your own cake. But to be honest with you, um, if you do it in stages like we we done, I think this has now gone on for, we started in October, getting the fruit prepared, and then we moved on from that to, um, um, November where we baked it and then we've been soaking it up until now December. So if you do it in small stages, it just takes the sting out of it as well. Um, I'm going to just grab another little bit here. Um, and again, this the, the amount of marzipan that you put in, we're going to trim the edges of this as well. So we just want to have enough that we're covering the cake. And again, we'll trim all the edges off it and we'll just keep that marzipan, wrap it up really well. Um, so that is the marzipan ready, just kind of worked it with my hands to get it nice and pliable. As I said, this marzipan is lovely and soft, so you don't need to work overwork it too much. Onto the table here, I'm just going to be dusting on a very light amount of icing sugar. And again, this is going to, um, just like you use flour when you're rolling out pastry, just using icing sugar here to help um, stop the marzipan from sticking on the table. So again, I'm just gonna roll that the same as with pastry. If you find it sticking slightly, add a little bit more icing sugar. We're gonna turn it, tap some on the top then as well. And again, just roll that out. Any questions in there? No, we're all very good, we're very quiet tonight. I don't know what part of the, the world or the country that you're tuning in from. Um, it's really cold at the moment here in Ireland. Um, if you are tuning in from further afield, um, do you make your own marzipan? Really, I'm using, this is a, this is a gem, um, Baking Life. And I'm using the gem marzipan just to highlight it. 
But if you have the time, you can absolutely make your own marzipan. It's just a very simple um, making it with ground almonds, icing sugar. You can use a little bit of um, almond essence and some egg white, um, pasteurized egg white ideally. And you can make your own marzipan that way. Again, very simple to make, very easy. You can make it in advance as well. It, 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 holds, um, it holds really well. So if you have the time, 100%. This marzipan here takes the takes all the hard work out of it for you so you can have it ready. So again, what I'm doing here is just turning that um, and every time I give it a little roll, like so, turn it again. You can see here, just take your time with it. There's no major rush. So again, rolling out until we get a lovely thickness and enough, um, I suppose, of a size that it's going to cover the entire cake as well. We're living here in West Bridgeshane. I was going to make the almond icing for how long before Christmas um, do I ice the cake? Um, so if you're going to make the, the marzipan yourself, as I said, if that's just your, your ground almonds, icing sugar, almond essence and egg, um, you can make that and ice the cake a week or two before Christmas. Um, it depends on what texture you like. If you like a fondant that's a little bit harder um, or a marzipan that is a bit more firmer, the longer you do it in advance, the firmer it'll be. Obviously, the closer to Christmas you ice it, the softer your marzipan will be and the softer your icing will be. So that's just more of a, of a preference um, on, on texture for yourself. Um, but when it comes to um, the cake, the cake, once you've soaked it with alcohol and stuff, I, I wouldn't be worried about the cake. It, it will hold in itself. But icing it, again, if you're going to be using like the, the fondant icing that I'm using here today, you can do that like a couple of weeks in advance, you know. So um, what I'd say to you is, um, Anne, isn't it? Uh, yes, Anne. So um, the kind of, the more you do at this point, I always find it just leaves Christmas an awful lot um, less stressful as well. So if you can ice your cake and get it done, and decorate it and leave it out somewhere cool, whether that's in a, in a cold press or a dark press, um, and keep it there, it'll be 100% for Christmas. And um, you don't need to be worried at this point. We're kind of on the on the home stretch at this stage. So um, yeah, if you can get it iced even this week, it's 100%. I'm icing this one now today and we're gonna be having this over the Christmas ourselves. So, um, so that's our marzipan rolled out. So again, if you wanna do a little bit of a test, it's just a matter of lifting your cake over and I'm kind of gauging this now for the size of the cake. Loads of marzipan here. Van finished, there's obviously um, a good little bit extra as well. So just going to dust that because I'm going to be rolling it up onto the rolling pin just like so. And I'm just going to be unrolling that over my cake. Again, you can get in here just with your hands and um, you have little flat um, spatulas and, and cake little boards to kind of smooth out your fondant icing. But you can also just get in here with your fingers for the marzipan. This is not going to be the, the final layer. Um, what I would say, if you, um, you're very welcome, Anne. Um, what I would say as well, there's, um, you can ice your cake or your, like do your marzipan on the cake and then you can leave it for a couple of days if you've time and if you're in no major rush. That way then, it just gives your marzipan time to kind of firm up a little bit. Um, but I'm going to be icing my icing on top of this today. So again, guys, um, you don't have to be too, too careful. But if you want your marzipan just to, to firm up a little bit more, um, I'm just trimming off the excess here, just around the edges. Again, you want a thinner layer, then obviously I obviously have a nice little strip here that's left over. You're just going to push all of that in like so. Now, if you've made the Christmas cake and for whatever reason, it has kind of domed or peaked um, as it's baked, it shouldn't, but if it does, that's okay. You have two options. What you can do is just trim it and then cover it with your marzipan and then your icing, or you can trim it and then turn your cake upside down because the base of your cake will always be flat because it's obviously sitting against the tin. So you can actually turn it the other way around and use the base of your cake as the flat because obviously you want the top of your cake to be as flat as possible, especially if you're adding a few decorations and stuff onto it. And um, so that's just a little tip as well, that you can just flip your cake over, cut the dome off so it's level, turn that upside down so it sits flat, but then you've got a lovely flat top, which would have been the base when you turned it over. And then you have a lovely uh, uh, flat top on your cake to work with. So again, just like so, just pressing on the marzipan. That's it, good to go. That's our cake marzipan. As I said, at this point, you can leave this for a few days before you decide to go ahead and put on your fondant icing, or if you're putting on a royal icing, again, that's completely up to yourself. Um, but I'm gonna do this um, straight away today, just so you can get a, a finished look at the cake. So I'm gonna push this here just for the moment, and we're bringing back over 
my um, warmed marmalade. And again, I'm just going to be giving this a light brush and this is just going to help the, um, now what you can, well, I haven't done what you can here. This isn't too bad. Use a marmalade that's not, it doesn't have the chunks in it. And uh, so a smooth marmalade, because if you get a big chunk of um, orange peel or rind there, that will show through on the on the fondant. Um, but again, it's only something small. There's a small little piece there. I'm just going to take that off. And again, you're just putting on a tiny bit, enough that your fondant will stick to this. And um, so I think I put, I think a tablespoon of marmalade in there and about two tablespoons of water and just heated it up gently, just so it kind of loosens the mix up so it's easier to brush on. So now at this point here, I'm just going to set my cake to one side and I'm going to move back over here. The one thing I would say to you, next we're going to be putting on, I'm using white fondant icing today. Um, if you have done any little um, bits of like holly or berries, that will take on the colour on the table. So you just make sure that you're cleaning your table because the white icing literally um, turns, what's this, L uh, Love Gem Foods, yes, they've got such a great range. Uh, so this is what we're trying to showcase today. Just some of the ingredients, well it's tons of the delicious fruits and stuff in the cake. So yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, but again, just make sure your table is nice and clean, that there's no colour on there, because again, white icing literally turns black when you look at it. It just takes on colour straight away. So just ensure that your table is nice and uh, clean. And we're just going to start now with our uh, fondant. So I have my my roll, my uh, block of white icing here. And I'm just going to give that a little knead here, just to one side, just to, to soften it up a little bit. Um, sometimes if it's been sitting in the press for a while and um, it can go a little bit harder around the outsides so it's important then just to uh, give that a little knead and um, just to ensure that you're getting a lovely smooth icing there and again very simply we're just repeating the process of what we've just done so you're just taking your rolling pin crushing down just helping it spread out initially and again I'm going to treat this like uh, your rolling pastry turn it sure that there's icing sugar on the table that's not sticking and the same goes for the top of the, the icing here as well and that depends on what brand you're using or um, some of them are softer some of them are um, a lot uh, firmer and they just take a little bit more work so now I'm just going to roll that like so again I'm just going to turn this this is a lovely soft uh, fondant so it's easy to work with again just rolling that out and we just want to ensure that our icing is wide enough that it's going to cover the entire cake. Again, just going to give that a turn, like so. And give it one more little roll of there, and that should be, I would say that's almost done. So, where are we going here? How many packets of fondant icing? Would you need for an eight or nine inch? Give me one second. I'm just gonna check the packet of this one here. Um, do, 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 as I disappear. And um, so it again, and that's gonna depend on the the how thick you want your fondant. But you can go from anything from seven hundred grams up to a kg, depending on how thick you want it. Now what I have here is about eight hundred grams of icing. So that will depend on the packs. Maybe you can pick up 500 gram packs. I think that it would be, 500 would be too little to cover a cake. You're better off just having it a little bit thicker, in my opinion. But then again, I do enjoy a thick fondant icing. Some people like it very thin. So again, that's a personal uh, preference. But again, between, I would say, six, 700 uh, to maybe 800 grams, you know, depending up to a kg if you want to, uh, to cover um, a good eight inch cake. As I said, this is, I think this is about 800 grams here and there's more than enough as you'll see now as I go to cover this cake here as well. Um, two 500 gram packs, yeah, that would be more than enough. And, and that would also give you extra fondant that you can do a few little decorations, whether that's little hollies or little uh, balls to decorate, like little pearls around the, the, the rim of the cake if you're not using a ribbon. So yeah, you're always better with a little bit of extra fondant. And to be totally honest with you, it keeps really well. If you wrap it up well and it doesn't go dry, it'll still be fine in six, eight months time. So you can still use it again. That's the one thing. So yeah, there's nothing worse. And trust me, I think I, I've been doing a, a pastry chef now for 23 years. There's nothing worse 
and it's happened to me where you go to roll out icing on a cake and you haven't got enough and then where are you you're you're completely not really stuck so yeah you're better off with more in my opinion uh, will you be using colored fond uh, if you're using colored fondant how do you get rid of the excess icing excess icing sugar? yes so good really good question emma um i am squinting here <laughs> it's not that i can't read it's probably that i can't see um so um what i would say to you is don't worry at this point about the excess excess that's a very light amount of sugar there like even if you see by my hands like there's not an excess but I get it, if this was blue fondant or red fondant or green fondant and you had dust at your table, naturally there's going to be um, icing sugar uh, residue on this. So what I would say to you is you just need a pastry brush, a regular pastry brush um, and just dust it off. My other ones are in here. I've got a wider kind of one here. Um, really handy and what you can do is just, once you've iced your cake and everything is done, then brush it off. So you're basically just dusting off the excess. And if there's quite a lot of icing sugar, what you can do is wet your brush and dry it on a towel so it's kind of just damp, not wet. And that in itself will um, get rid of the excess icing sugar as well. Um, but you don't want a wet, wet brush. You don't want your fondant to get wet. But a damp brush that you've just kind of uh, dried off in a towel and brush that, that will get rid of the icing sugar. But a dry brush should do it as well. But if it's a little bit more tricky, you can move her on to using a, a slightly damp uh, pastry brush. So again, just like I would uh, use for a regular pastry here, I'm just going to roll this up, bring my cake forward. And again, just very simply unrolling onto my cake. As I said, there is going to be excess icing here and that's okay. Um, you're better off, in my opinion, with a little bit of extra icing than not having enough because as I said there's nothing worse if you had a large curve here and you have to start patching it up now listen ribbons are great and trimming a cake with a ribbon is um, is not only looks beautiful but it hides a multitude of sins as well and um, so if in doubt don't worry if there's a little patch of icing that's that you can see the marzipan or the cake underneath it and um, a ribbon is your best friend when it comes to a Christmas cake so um don't be worried if that does happen. So very simply, and I'm not getting overly fussy here, I'm, not, I'm just um, pushing on the icing just to get rid of any little creases that we have along the outside. And again, just very carefully, I'm just going to run my knife around the outside here. Like so, we have plenty of excess icing here as well, but I'd rather have that excess icing left over um, than actually running out of icing. So I'm just gonna push the little bit of excess icing that I have in here, just like so. So as you can see now, I'll try and lift this up. This does weigh a ton. We've got that lovely cake iced all the way around there. So just like so. And um, there's a few tiny little bumps that I can see on top of the cake. And the best way to eliminate that would be to roll out your marzipan, put that on, and let your marzipan firm up. Um, and then when you put on your icing, you don't see it as much. I'm marzipanning and icing on the same within five minutes off each other. If you want to leave it a bit longer and your marzipan firms up a little bit and you ice it, there's less chance of you seeing that little bit of texture. But it's only the smallest, smallest little detail. So that is the cake covered with the marzipan again, putting on your marmalade and having the fondant on top. So that's 99.9% .9 of the work done at this point here and next is just decorating it and again episode one we made the little fondant decorations which I have here which I'm just going to grab and um, this is our beautiful little blue ribbon we have some holly here more little pieces of holly and some berries there and um, and it's just a matter now of, of, of decorating so I'm just going to grab I have a little brush here Pretty sure I do. Yes, here we go. And I'm going to um, just get a little bit of water. And just with that, I'm just going to be adding in some icing sugar just to make a little paste. And I'm going to be using this almost like a little bit of um, glue. So again, that's just icing sugar, water. Um, I always laugh when I see in certain cake shops online that they actually sell it's called edible glue and you can literally just make your own like I just done there 
with a little bit of icing sugar and a little bit of water and that's going to um, be absolutely beautiful. So what we're going to do first is we're going to place on our blue ribbon and again if you've ever, never made a fondant ribbon before and um, there is a tutorial on that over on um, on the gem page here um, and it just shows you how to do that. Now you will need to leave it for a little while just for the um, lift this up sorry multitasking at its best here i'm going to slide that over don't worry if there's a little crack here or there that's completely fine and um, i'm just going to lift this up here just to show you so we have the ribbon placed on top like so so we have that lovely ribbon to begin with now i just went with a blue ribbon because we're sticking with the the gem colors and again if a little bit off your a ribbon or anything kind of cracks. Don't be afraid just to give it a little bit of that little bit of edible glue, rub off the excess and that will hold it in its place. And next up now at this point, we're just gonna start arranging our holly leaves. And because we made these a while back, they firmed up nicely, so they're actually easier to pick up. So again, I'm just gonna start now and just by sticking down the holly here, I'm just gonna create almost like a, a wreath. Um, all the way around. There's no exact way of doing this, but again, it's just to create that lovely trim of our holly here, just like so. And again, this is the fun part. It's nice when you've, you have the decorations already made and um, that you can actually just enjoy the assembly process. Now, what I would say to you is, don't be afraid to get 3D, put them on top of each other, move them around. If they all sit flat, um, then they all look the exact same, it just doesn't look very realistic. So don't be afraid to layer some on top of each other. I have obviously some smaller ones here as well that I'm just going to add in. And again, just going to pop these in where you have any little, a little bit of uh, space, like so. Pop this one here, and one more up here at the corner. So I said, this is, this is the creative fun part. As I said, making the cake and all that, once you get that out of the way, you can enjoy this process here. So again, I'm just going to add in some of the little smaller ones here just to fill up any little spaces that we may have. We have no questions coming in, we're all good. I will spin this around so you can kind of see what's going on a little bit closer now in a second. Adding in our next little holly leaf there. Um, and again, now these can be rolled um, and cut and put on when they're still soft. It just leaves it a little bit easier when you um, when you make it in advance. They just don't break as easy on you. Again, I think my problem is is knowing when to stop. Less is more. So do you know what? I'm going to stop at that. That's a little um, wreath kind of created all the way around. You can see there. And I'm just going to grab some of the little red berries, which I have rolled out. And again, just little holly berries. We're just going to pop these wherever it needs a little bit of a lift of color. So again, using your little icing sugar and water here, it's just a really helpful way to kind of stick everything together. So I'm going to pop on a few more little berries here, just like so. And again, the red really pops when you put it on the cake. Now, obviously, there's tons of decorations that you can actually pick up and buy. And obviously, we made these here, but again, you can get these little Santa Clauses and um, little reindeers, and you can just create your own little winter wonderland. Okay, just like so. I'm just going to stick that in together. I'm going to put on one more little bunch and that's us done. I'm going to lift this up onto um, the cake stand. We just finish with a little ribbon just to tie it all together. I'm going to move this behind me here. And I have my very festive um, cake stand here. It comes out once a year. So um, I'm just going to carefully now lift my cake on there. Just like so and I will come round to do a close-up um, and again as I said okay I'm going to let you decide will we go with a purple or a red ribbon I had a blue one but I misplaced it somewhere so I'm down to a red or a purple what do you think I'll wait now and let somebody decide for me 
because this is too big of a decision now for me to make. So we have red or purple. What do you think that we've trimmed it? Could be nice with the red with the stands. Do you know what, Anne? I think myself and yourself are on the same page here. The red with the red stand. Bernie's saying red as well. We're saying red. Do you know what? <laughs> it's a hand and Jenny saying red. Okay, guys, I, I, I don't know why I showed a purple ribbon. Um, so yes, red for the win. So I'm going to just very simply just trim our cake. And as you can see that lovely, lovely finish that we have. Now, I'm just going to tie a very loose little bow on this as well. Yes, guys, red for the win. I think that you're all 100% right. So I'm just going to tie this here now. I've got a massive bow. So I'm just going to trim this ever so slightly. Same for this one. And uh, we have that lovely bow. Now you can arrange it a little bit nicer if you wish. Um, making bows is not my strong point. It is when they're made of fondant, but not when they're actually ribbons themselves. So I'm just going to fix this up here and turn that around. There, that's it. We'll do it this. I'm going to bring this around. Now this literally weighs a ton just to show you what it looks like. So this is what we are left with. We have our Christmas cake that we have our lovely red ribbon. As I said, ribbon is amazing. It just hides a multitude of sins. Um, and there we have the blue handmade fondant ribbon. And then we have the gorgeous kind of holly, kind of creating a little Christmas wreath all the way around. And this is just the design that I chose. You don't have to do exactly this. You can make um, just the reed on its own or just the ribbon. Or as I said, you can pick up some really nice fondant decorations. But the little hits of um, holly berries are really nice in there as well. But again, you've got that lovely height from the fondant um, ribbon there. It just, it held really, really nice. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Anne. I wouldn't go that far now, but I really appreciate that. Um, but it's just really pretty and it's really nice. And as I said, don't get overwhelmed with the amount of work that you have to do. Um, the, uh, if you do it in stages, and even if you roll the fondant holly today and let that for a few days, it's just it's one less thing to do. But I'd say, as I said earlier on, we're kind of on the homeward stretch. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, we're on the homeward stretch at this point. So whatever you can do um, at this point, I would. Love the Christmas read. Uh, so... Uh, different too. Yeah, exactly, Anne. It's just something a little bit different. And I said, the bow does take a little bit of work. And if you want to try that, jump back onto the first video and I'll show you. You have to kind of put tissue paper in to kind of hold um, that little loop until the fondant hardens. So if you don't have the time to do that, just a very simple fondant or um, holly wreath all the way around would be absolutely lovely as well. Um, and again, just with the white and the red, it's just very classic, very Christmassy. And um, yeah, and that's it. I'm kind of sad now. This is like, as I said, thank you, Bernie. Um, I'm kind of sad. This is the third and um, final series of the Christmas cake. It literally feels like two days ago that we were soaking the fruit and talking about Christmas like it was seven months away. And um, so, yeah, that the couple of weeks absolutely flew. But I just want to say, obviously, a massive thank you to Jem um, and a massive thank you to all of you for tuning in and for watching and for asking really good questions and um, yes if you do uh, create your own Christmas cake uh, this year you are baking your own Christmas cake make sure to tag either myself at uh, Chef Shane Smith or you can tag Jen as well here and um, because we'd love to see your recreations and um, so festive well done thank you so much really and um, yeah we'd love to see your recreations if you do do your own style it doesn't have to be the same as this it can be um, your own uh, take on this but yeah if you have Kind of follow the, the, the cake recipe and you're going to cover it yourself and uh, we would absolutely love to see how you get on over the christmas um thanks so much uh people really, really enjoy them thanks so much off to ice the cake this week oh amazing Anne! i can't wait um i can't wait to see it i'm sure and post or send me a little picture when it's done and uh, jenny thank you so much and a happy christmas to you too i can't believe i'm saying happy christmas to people and um, it's so lovely to see so many repeat people coming back in to watch um all of these classes that really means a lot uh, to myself and obviously to Jem as well. And um, so we have so many beautiful things lined up for 2023. And um, uh, thank you so much. Is that uh, door? Um, 
I'm, I'm, dwarf. I'm trying to guess names here as well. Yes, we have so many exciting things lined up for next year as well. And we will be talking to you in the new year about that. Um, but I just want to thank, take this opportunity now. This will be my last live on uh, the GEM account this side of the new year. So um, for anyone that's tuning in, obviously my own socials, I'll be tapping away over there over on Chef Shane Smith. But over here on GEM, uh, this is the last live that I'll be doing for this year. Um, not for next year, hopefully. Uh, but I just want to wish you all a very, very um, Merry Christmas and a healthy and happy new year. And thank you again for tuning in and for uh, partaking in all of our Baking Gem lives and all of the Q&As that we've done over the last couple of months. Uh, you really have been amazing and um, you've kept the wheels turning, which we really do appreciate. Um, but yes, massive thank you again. And um, I will see you all very soon. As I said, I'm over on my own page at Chef Shane Smith. And obviously we'll be posting plenty more content here on the gem page on the lead up to Christmas. And um, hopefully I'll be doing a little takeover in the new year as well. So, um, but yes, thanks again for watching. And um, best of luck if you are decorating your own Christmas cake. Um, absolutely no bother to you at all. And as I said, we would love to see your recreation. So if you do make one, tag myself and Gem and we would love to see it. Uh, Caramel, thank you so much. Uh, wishing you a very happy Christmas as well. I feel so strange saying that to people. Although I have Christmas decorations everywhere, it still feels like July to me. Um, have a lovely evening, guys. And again, have a lovely Christmas. And I will be talking to you all very, very soon. Cheers, guys.